Hi, I'm Matthew Fritz and I'm here with violinist Eric Silberger. We're here to try some bows. We've pre-selected 30 bows to start with. These bows are brand new, they have not been owned by a player, they've only been played a couple minutes at most, um, so everything is, is in a very similar state. Uh, that being said, Eric, what do you look for in a bow? Well, I want to find a bow that plays very well on my violin. Mm -hmm. So when I first pick up a bow, I see how the weight is, I see certain things, how does it feel? Sure. And once I take that to the violin, I play a few notes, try to get a general sound. How does it sound for longer strokes and legato? Sure. And then I try to see which bows work better for certain strokes. And I'm looking for as versatile a bow as possible. For some people, they might prioritize certain elements for what they're playing. Now one thing you mentioned is the weight of the bow. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that gets talked about a lot. It's a question that we get asked a lot within the shop. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, the overall weight of the bow is not the whole picture. Um, so in your experience, what, what is it that uh, makes a bow feel lighter or heavier in the hand? What's well, the balance? Because at the tip, some bows feel very, very light and some mm -hmm. bows feel very heavy. And when you are drawing the bow, you can actually feel the weight distribution and the balancing point. And so, for instance, if I were to look at a bow and say, okay, it balances around approximately here, and some bows, it's further up and further down. And right. so it's, it's very interesting to see what kind of bows uh, have certain balance. Generally, we want a balance that's somewhere around this area. When we're selecting bows for the shop, we weigh them to get the, the overall weight. We also check the balance point, uh, as well as the strength of the stick. So uh, there's a certain range we found works well for most players. When we're talking about sound versus how a bow feels, my question to you is what advice would you have for students when it comes to, to balancing the way a bow feels versus the sound it creates on the instrument? Well, a bow when you're first starting out, won't feel comfortable regardless. However, when you try a lot of bows, you start getting a feeling for how they compare to one another. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things is to go to a shop and to try out as many bows as you can. And once you've done that, and you can do that with a teacher very often, that's right. a very good way to get an idea. One of the things you look for is, is it when I'm playing, is a bow influencing very strongly how I play? Sure. And you want a bow that you can kind of make the decisions and not the other way around. Yeah, definitely. Would you give us an idea of how you're going to go about testing each of these bows? Absolutely. So for me, it's about um, the pieces I'm playing. And for anyone who's trying out a bow, you should find a bow that works for the kinds of pieces you're playing. Um, I'm going to first start with a legato passage. And I get a kind of idea of the sound of how this bow um, naturally responds. And then from there, I'm going to go to various strokes, technical strokes, for instance, uh, ricochet. And if, if you're not playing that kind of repertoire, you can use open strings or scales. Sure. Shall we try the next one? Absolutely. So of the 30 bows, uh, on our initial pass, there were 14 that you seemed to like. There were six that didn't work for you for whatever reason, so we rejected those pretty quickly. So there were eight bows that were somewhere in, in the middle. We took then another pass uh, with the 14 better bows, and uh, we found three that really spoke to you as a player. Um, and uh, there were 11 that, that were good, but maybe didn't have the qualities that these three did. Um, so we, I think you've got the first one there. Can, mm -hmm. we, can we hear it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's hear one of the other better bows.
before we talk about sound, what about the technicality? Um, how did they feel in the hand? Was there something that was drawing you to these to these bows, or, or a reason why they rose to the top? Well, the balance felt pretty good. Yeah. So for certain strokes, you have to try and kind of control it. Yeah. And with some of these bows, I just let the bow bounce by itself. Can you talk about what kind of sound these better bows generated on your instrument? I was looking for something a little bit darker, right? Because it's a very bright instrument to start with. What you hear under your ear isn't exactly what you should be paying attention to. Sometimes what you should pay attention to is the sound you hear back from the hall that right. comes out. Right. So you get that from experience, but also uh, feedback from friends and audience members. So far we've got, we've narrowed it down from 30 bows to three. I yeah. think you've done a very good job so far. At this point it would be our recommendation that you spend some real time with, with these bows. For anybody that's looking, if there's two or three bows that are, that are working in the shop on the same day, um, check them out, spend some real time with them, see if you can play them in any and every space you can get your hands on, really give them a, a good workout, and that should direct you as to, to which bow ultimately is right for you. Well Eric, thank you so much for being here and doing this for us, uh, I found it to be extremely helpful. I just realized we never heard the, the last of the three bows. So Oh, yes. you think you could maybe play us out I think on this, this one? this might have been one of my favorite ones. <laughs> okay, let's play something uh, Tchaikovsky a little. <laughs> 